as well. Yes. All right. Good. Um, Sorry about all the problems with uh, connection. We're having some issues with internet, and Mr. Brewer's running around like a chicken with his head cut off trying to get stuff set up for teachers who are not going to be able to come in. So um, what I wanted to do today is I wanted to uh, start by just kind of talking about what was going to be on the test, and that'll give you a chance to ask questions, and then what we can do is we can work a few problems if we have time. We're going to shoot to uh, finish this up in about 30, 35 minutes. All right, so I'm going to mute everybody, and if you have a question, just unmute yourself. So um, your test is tomorrow, and uh, the test tomorrow, um, there are some times set up for you to be able to go in and start testing, and there will be a time limit, um, but you have like three hours to take the test. And the reason why I'm giving you more time when I wouldn't normally do that is because I don't know if everybody will be able to log in like they need to. If you have some technical problems, this will give you a little bit of a cushion so that that way um, you can get your test done. So the test tomorrow will open up at 9 a.m. and it closes down at 12 p.m. This means that at 12 p.m., whether you are finished with the problems or not, that test is going to auto submit, okay? So you need to make sure that you log in early enough to allot yourself about one and a half hours to take the test. That would be a typical class time. So I say, you know, just it won't take some of y'all an hour and a half. It may take some of y'all an hour and 45 minutes, but I would definitely try to log in as close to nine o'clock as I could to get the test done. The test is gonna cover just chemistry math. And so here are the topics that you need to be uh, familiar with. You are going to see molar mass. You are going to see formula mass. You are going to have gram to mole to atom conversions. We're going to have percent composition and then empirical and molecular formulas. Okay, so this is what the test is going to cover. Now, I have tried to make the test as virtual friendly as possible, just to make it a little easier on you and, on, and for me. So when you log into the test, you're gonna notice that there are some multiple choice. Um, the multiple choice are problems, so you'll work the problems out and then choose the answer. On your multiple choice, please show your work if it's a math problem and show the letter answer, okay? So show your work and circle your number answer, but also show your letter answer, and that's just gonna help me with grading them. There are also gonna just be some open-ended questions um, and problems as well. Okay, so that's the format of the test. So does anyone have any questions about the format of the test or what you need to do as far as the online aspect? If you do, unmute yourself and ask. Okay, all right. Well, let's go ahead and talk about the problems, all right? So um, let's look at the first one, molar mass, and that should be formula mass, not formal mass. Formula mass. Um, does anyone have any questions about these two? Do I need to work any of those out? Yes. Okay. So let's work uh, one of each one real quickly. Um, so let's just say that uh, I ask you to find the formula mass of calcium carbonate. So that would be one calcium one carbon and three oxygens. So one times 40.08 AMUs gives me 40.08 AMUs. One times 12.01 AMU gives me 12.01 AMU. And three times 16 AMU 
gives me, what is that, 48? Yeah, 48 AMU. And then I just add all of those together. Well, like, how do you find the formula mass, like, coming from the molar mass? You don't do anything. It's the same thing. It's just different units. If I said to find the molar mass of calcium well, like, carbonate, this would be the exact same numbers, but instead of putting AMUs, I would put grams per mole. Grams per mole. Grams per mole. Grams per mole, grams per mole, grams per mole, and my answer would be 100.09 grams per mole. So if they ask you to tell the molar mass or formula mass, it's the exact same math. The only thing that's different are the units. Okay. Well, can, can I ask another question? And it may not be concerning that. Sure. Um, well, I was doing a problem on page 11 of the packet, and um, I got stuck on number six, and it was asking me, it was telling me the molar mass, and it was asking me what was the molecular formula. Yeah, you can use molar mass. Molecular formula is the same thing as molar mass, um, and formula mass is the same thing as molar mass. It's just different units. Okay. Okay. All right, so does that, that answer that question? Okay, so let's look at what about converting from grams to moles to atoms? Does anyone need me to work one or two of those? I do want to point out, I have noticed in grading a few of y'all's papers, remember that on this, sig figs, is two places after decimal. On these, sig figs is the given. Okay, so your answer has to match what you were given. All right, so if they wanted me to convert 1.1 grams of sodium chloride to moles, this is two sig figs, so my answer would have to be two sig figs as well. Okay, so does anyone need me to work one of those out? Or are you okay? All right, going once, going twice. So, when well, do we have to um, do um, scientific notation? Okay, the only time you ever have to do scientific notation is when you're rounding and you can't seem to get it to work out. And I'll give you a good example. One of the problems that you had on a worksheet, um, I don't know if this was the exact number, but uh, the number was like um, 4,100 maybe, something like that. And they needed three significant figures, okay? Well, one, two, three, that zero doesn't round it up and these zeros are not significant. There's no way to make this three sig figs unless I say 4.10 times 10 to the third. Okay, so the only time you really have to worry about putting an answer into significant figures is if it will not work out as a whole number. Okay, so is everybody good on these problems? Does anybody need me to work anything else out on these two types of problems? Okay, so let's look at um, the next one is percent composition, which most of y'all seem to pretty much have that one. Um, so let's just talk about it real briefly. Um, so percent composition, remember for your sig figs on this, it's two places after the decimal. Okay, does anyone need me to work out a percent composition for you? Anybody? All right, so um, the next one was empirical and molecular formulas. And I'm gonna tell y'all, I have been super excited 
at the work that's been turned in on molecular empirical formulas. Y'all are doing a top-notch job on this topic, which is just fantastic because I was really nervous since this is one that we did completely virtually. So that, that makes me super happy. Does anybody need me to work out an empirical or molecular formula problem? Can you do like yes. one molecular problem? I can, I can. Hold on, let me pull up one because those are some that I can't really do from my head. They won't work out pretty. Let's see. Okay, so let's do um, let's do an empirical formula. Okay, we'll do one of those first. Okay, so it says to determine the empirical formula of a compound that is found to be 52.11% carbon, 13.14% hydrogen, and 34.75% oxygen. Okay, so step one, I'm going to get rid of the percents and I'm going to change those to grams. So this is now going to be grams of carbon, grams of hydrogen, grams of oxygen. All right, step two, I'm going to convert my grams to moles. And in order to do that, I'm going to use my periodic table and put in the molar mass. Okay, and so that's gonna cancel out grams. And now I'm gonna run those through my calculator. And let's see, 52.11 divided by 12.01 is going to give me 4.339 moles. And then 13.14 divided by 1.01 .01 is going to give me 13.00, well, it's basically 13.01 moles. And then uh, 34.75 divided by 16 is going to give me 2.172 moles. So this is Ms. my smallest. Mary, yeah. You want to say uh, three places, right? You that usually three go three, three, two to three. Three usually works for me. Sometimes it doesn't, though. Um, just it seems okay. like the more places you have, the, the better it's going to be. So I'm going to divide okay. all of these by the smallest. So 2.172 is my smallest, and those are all moles, so now I can cancel that out. And now I can divide, so that one obviously is going to be 1, and then 13.01 divided by 2.172 is going to be basically 6, and then 4.399 divided by 2.172 is going to be basically two. So now I'm gonna just write it out. So it's C2H6O, and that's my answer. Okay. So does anyone have any questions about how I got that? Yes, uh -huh. Riley. Um, is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I have a quick question. Um, yep. Like when, oh wait, no, that's molecular formula. I'm you, you get on this one. Oh no, wait, you can do it there too. Are you supposed to um simplify that? No, um, don't you can't because that's a one behind that O. So you can't you can't simplify this. Empirical formulas are always going to be simplified. Okay, they're going to uh, be their simplest, and you can't simplify them anymore. Okay, because I think that's what I was confused on about the molecular because molecular formulas are expanded. That would be something uh -huh. like C12H36O6 or something like would that. Would we simplify that though or no? No, or leave it? no you're going to leave it just like it is because that's what you're showing is the unsimplified version. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. All right. So um, let's look at another one that is um, just molecular formula. So um, for molecular formula, they're going to tell us that we have a compound whose empirical formula is CH2O. So this is their empirical formula. And they tell us the molar mass is 120.112 grams per mole. And they want us to find the molecular formula. Okay. So that's what we're tasked at finding. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my molar mass of CH2O. Now, some of you are asking, what about if it says formula mass? That's fine. I can just, if it was AMUs, I would just find the formula mass, okay? So I've got one carbon. So that's one times 12.01 grams per mole. I have two hydrogens. That's two times 1.01 grams per mole. And I have one oxygen, which is one times 16 grams per mole. So now I have 12.01 grams per mole. I have 2.02 .02 grams per mole. And I have 16 grams per mole. And then I'm going to add all those together. So let me do that real quick. So 12.01 plus 2.02 .02 .02 plus 16. And I get 30.02 grams per mole. Okay, so this is my empirical formula mass because the smallest one goes in the bottom. So now I'm going to use x equals molecular over empirical formula mass. So I'm going to say 120.12 grams per mole divided by 30.02 grams per mole. That's going to cancel out. And when I divide those, I get four, okay? So now I'm going to take this four and I'm going to distribute it through my empirical formula. <clears throat> so now this is going to be C4H8O4. And that is my molecular formula. Don't simplify it. That's the actual formula, okay? Any questions about this? Okay, so let's do one that's kind of a mixture of all of them, or of, of both empirical and molecular, because you might would see one like this on the test. So I'm going to write out the problem so you would know what to anticipate. It tells us a compound with a formula mass of 42.08. AMU is found to be 85.65% carbon and 14.36% hydrogen. Find the molecular formula. So normally to find the molecular formula, we would need the empirical formula mass, but they're not giving us any of that. So we've got to figure all of that out. So we're going to start by finding the empirical formula. So step one, what is step one? What do I do first? Change it to grams. Change it to grams. So 85.65 grams of carbon and 14.36 grams of hydrogen. All right, somebody else, tell me, what do I do next? What do I do, Dragon? Don't you uh, divide it by the grams? Uh huh. I'm going to do molar mass, convert it to moles. So that's 12.01 grams of carbon and one mole of carbon, 1.01 grams of hydrogen and one mole of hydrogen. All right, so now we got to punch those in our calculator. So 85.65 divided by 12.01 and I get 7.132 moles. 
and then 14.36 divided by 1.01 .01, and I get 14.218 moles. Now what am I going to do, Jolie? Jolie. Sorry, I forgot I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do next? Next, you have to add them up. I'm good. Nope, not going to add them up. Oh, wait, I'm thinking of the molecular formula. Okay, yep, what wait. Am I? I've converted to moles. Okay. So what's step three? Oh, wait, so now you divide by the smallest number. That's right. So I'm going to divide everything by 7.132 moles. Okay, so this is obviously one, and then I'm going to do 14.218 divided by 7.132, and that's going to be two. So now what do I do, Claire Beth McCullough? You write the formula with those as subscripts. That's right. So it's CH2. Now, what is this what kind of formula is this empirical empirical that's right that's my empirical formula okay but the the question asks for my molecular formula so i've got to keep going so now i need to find the molar mass of ch2 so one carbon or not, I'm sorry, formula mass, AMU, 12.01 AMU, and two hydrogens, and that's going to be 2.02 AMU, so that's 14.83 AMUs, okay, am I done? What am I going to do now? You have, to, you have to divide by your something. I'm going to do X equals molecular formula mass divided by empirical formula mass. So it's biggest, which was 42.08 from the problem, divided by the smallest. And then when I punch that in, I get 42.08 divided by 14.03, and that gives me three. Now, what do I do with that three right there? You multiply it times your other formula. Okay, so I'm gonna take that three and put it through, distribute it through CH2, and that gives me C3H6. So this is my empirical formula, but this is the answer. I had to do all that work to get that. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So that's a review of all of the problems that are going to be on the test on Friday, okay? So Friday, it's going to cover um, these topics. Let me pull it back up. All right. So these are the topics that it will cover, and the format's going to be multiple choice and some open-ended questions slash problems, okay? You need to make sure that you set an alarm so that at nine o'clock you are either up or in the process of getting up so that you can log in and get started on the test. Now, for some of you, the test may take 30 minutes to an hour. For some of y'all, it may take an hour to an hour and 15. For a few of you that work a little bit longer or a little bit slower, it may take you an hour and a half to two hours. That's fine. You've got a three hour window to take it, okay? So you know what you're able to do, what your pace is. So you need to make sure that you log in as necessary so that you can get everything done, okay? So does anyone have any other questions?
how do you go back and like watch these videos again? Okay, I'm <clears> going to um when, once I've finished this, it takes a minute for it to convert it. When I get home, I will upload it to my YouTube channel and I'll put the link on the stream in the Google Classroom. If you go to the Google Classroom and look, um, let me see. Uh, when you go, let's see, well, so let me share my screen. Let's see if that'll work. Can y'all see my, can y'all see my screen? Yes. Okay. All right. So can y'all see me in the Google Classroom yet? Google. Okay. Well, you're definitely on Google, so. Okay, you can see Google? Yes, right. ma'am. Okay, good. All right, let me go over here to my Google Classroom. Okay, so when you get um, into the Google Classrooms, all right, so this is y'all. Right here on the stream, you'll see this is where I'm posting stuff. So like right here, this is the video that was on empirical and molecular form. Does everybody see that? All right. So if you click on that, it's going to open up the video and then you can watch the video and see how we did it. And it's going to go, it's going to go to my YouTube channel. So the end, for some reason it won't play my YouTube videos. It's weird. I can play anybody else's, but I can't play mine, but you can go to my YouTube channel and, um, and see all the videos that we've been making. Okay. Um, I do have uh, something to say because whenever I went back to look at it for like empirical formula and stuff like that, yep. I need to uh, to review over it a little bit. Um, I was I wasn't able to see your work because it showed everybody at the same time, but then at some point it did only show your screen, and I didn't understand what was going on. Hmm. But luckily. It was on the part that I needed help on, so okay. I just looked out on that one. But okay, well, there's no telling. <laughs> We're learning as we go, so it may be that um, somebody was unmuted and it would go to them. Um, so it's supposed to be on speaker view, though, so that way it's whoever's speaking takes over the screen. So, does anyone have any other questions before we we dismiss? Um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, on the test, is it going to be just like the other work that we've been doing where we have to work it on the thing and provide our answers, but then do extra, like our separate work and send pictures of it in? Yes. What I would do okay. is I would just pull up the test. I'd get me a piece of notebook paper and I would just number it one. And if the problem, if the question doesn't require you to do any work, just answer it A, B, C, or D. But if it's something where you have to, to show work, do the work and then choose your answer, A, B, C, or D. And circle your, and circle, so I can see your work and circle the answer. So that's what I'm looking for. But if it's, if it's a math problem, you have to show the work. Okay. okay. So if, do it on a sheet of notebook paper, do we have to go back to like the form and mark all of our answers? No, okay. it's not going to be like that because we are having some serious trouble with like Google Forms. So I'm just going to do just like we've been doing for our homework. You just work everything out and shoot me a picture. I think Mr. Okay. Jones was having that problem because yeah. people were sitting test and he was like. The, yeah, and they get lost in cyberspace. I've got like two or three current events that are just out there floating around somewhere and I can't mm -hmm. find them for another class. So, um, and I think a lot of it is because literally everyone in the world has converged on Google Classroom in the last three weeks. And I don't think Google was prepared for this. And so um, <laughs> it's been it's been a crazy, you know, time for because it's everybody in the world. It's not just Mississippi. It is the entire world is going through this right now. So it's it's the most bizarre thing. Thing I've ever witnessed. Now I do want to stress there's a few of you that have not completed some work okay you do not need to wait until the midnight hour to get everything turned in if you've done the work let's get it submitted okay if you've not done the work you need to get it done tonight so that you can submit it tomorrow because after midnight rolls around tomorrow night and we move on into April the 4th you're not going to be able to submit anything 
Okay. And um, I know some of y'all have said, I've done it. I just haven't submitted it yet. And then I've got a few of y'all that have submitted stuff, but it came, it, it didn't open up for me. So be sure you go and check your work and see what your grade is so that that way you can see if you need to resubmit something. Okay. And I'm grading as fast as I can, but it is a pain grading on this computer because I have to pull it up and I have to zoom in on each one of your problems. And mm -hmm. it has been, it's been, a, it's been tough and I can only grade a few at a time because after a while I just start seeing kind of crazy. So um, I think I've got everybody caught up. If you had submitted anything today by nine o'clock, it's been caught up and it's been graded. So I'm going to try to grade a little bit tonight and then tomorrow I'm going to be at home, but I will be by my phone. So if you have trouble getting into the, um, the test or something's going on that I need to know about, just shoot me a message and I'll, I'll be near my computer that I can help y'all. Okay. And you said about like chemistry fees, you said Miss Wells will probably be taking those yes. up tomorrow. If you, what just happened? Okay, the power just, uh, if you have uh this is weird <laughs> in the dark <laughs> um if you have anything that you owe um especially for you seniors because i know you're trying to pick up um senior regalia and everything you just come to uh the they'll have a drive through you'll pay them any fees that you owe and they're supposed to give you all of your stuff. Okay. So um, if I were you though, I would check my email a couple of times a day because we are, every time we turn around, we're getting something new. Like yesterday, the governor, uh, you know, put us in this uh, shelter in place order. And I don't know what that's going to mean for school. So, you know, check your email daily. Um, even if you're not going to do schoolwork, it's just a good idea when you get up in the morning, check your email. And before you go to bed tonight, you know, check your email. And, you know, you don't have to necessarily do schoolwork every time. You just need to make sure that you are keeping up with what's going on. Okay. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah. In the stream, you said something about there's a link to check your grades. It's at the top of the Google Classroom page. Let me see if I can pull that up for you. When you um, when you go to the Google Classroom, let me move this out of the way. Uh, I'm still trying. Right up here, you should see grades. Mine doesn't say that. Okay, if you don't um, see that, then click on classwork and go back and click on the assignment. I'm not going to do it because then you'll see everybody's grades. But if you click on the assignment, it should have your grade there. Okay. okay. Yeah, mine does that. I just didn't know what you meant by like a link. Well, I thought that it was up there, but I'm going to try to get everything punched into Sam. I was just waiting because it seemed kind of silly to punch everything in. Nothing was due until Friday. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is as I, as I complete stuff on Friday, like each, each assignment, I'm going to try to get it uploaded into Sam so that you can see what you're, um, what you've got. Okay. All right. So does anyone have any more questions? I have a, another quick question. I'm sorry. That's fine. Um, with the Khan Academy thing, I know I signed up with the link, but, and you said something about the work being hidden or something, yeah. but it's just so showing that I'm signed up for biology. Okay. Let me check on that. I've never used Khan Academy before. And I hadn't really worried about it because we haven't started on that yet. But let me play around with it and I can check to see if you're in the class. And I have a class code. So if you accepted mm -hmm. it, but it puts you in the wrong class, we'll figure it out. Okay. Because I was just kind of worried because you said it was a grade. And then I was like, yeah, it, will, it will be a grade, but I hid what you're supposed to see. So it, it may be that when it opens up, then you'll be able to see it. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll worry about it. tomorrow. But tomorrow you're going to be kind of overwhelmed and don't get overwhelmed. Your first goal tomorrow is to get the test done and to make sure everything's submitted for this past unit. Okay. The one we're working on now, then you're going to see this big announcement. And when you go to classwork, you're going to almost pass out because there is a whole series of assignments for the next unit and everything is going to open up to you on Friday morning at eight o'clock. So tomorrow morning at eight o'clock. So once you finish your test, if you want to go ahead and start on the next unit, you can. If you want to take a break and start on it Monday, you can. 
but just kind of pace yourself. And remember, we also have Easter, which I know a lot of us aren't able to go do our normal Easter activities, but you're probably going to want to take a little time off for Easter and not do any schoolwork, okay? So, wait, uh, do you know how long is going to be the next unit? Like, what's the yes, due date? it's due on the 17th. So you'll you'll turn it in everything in our last day that we're supposed to be virtually learning. So um, it'll it'll pop up and everything will be due on the 17th. And I'm going to suggest that as you do it, just go ahead and submit it. And I'm going to grade them because hopefully if we go back on the 20th, we're going to start our next unit. And um, so and we'll we're going to use the stuff we've done these two units to complete the next unit and so and then and really and truthfully we're going to be right on track there's one other thing that i usually cover and i kind of put it together and so if we come back we're going to do reaction stoichiometry and then we're going to do the electron and periodic table kind of together before we, we get out of school in may miss Fort mary yeah um do seniors still get exemptions for final exams uh, yeah, I'm assuming they will. So okay. yeah, um, we're we're gonna say that y'all will. If I hear different, I'll let you know. But I, I'm sure that y'all will. Do you think we're gonna be able to come back? I'm praying that we do, cause I'm sick to death of being at home, and my kids are too. They're <laughs> painting the house today, and they're not happy about that. And uh, everybody <laughs> wants to see their friends, and everything's been canceled, and they're tired of being at home, and I'm kind of tired of being at home too. So um, I'm hoping that we do. I said, uh, you summer know, I feel like what's that? what's that? Summer has started very early. If we don't go back, yeah, yeah. I, I, my, my biggest uh, right now. I said I'm just kind of. Uh, it's hard to say because President Trump gave one date and then our governor gave another date. So exactly. I, yeah, we're having to kind of wait on that. And then if everybody would just stay inside and stop going to the store and stop going to the restaurants and stop going here, there and everywhere, then we would stop all of this and it would be over with in about two weeks. But nobody listens and everybody's just going about business as usual. So what about there's um the first baby that died. It was like a six month old baby. Yeah. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, we didn't have as many cases today as we did yesterday. Yesterday we had like 140 cases. And I think today we didn't have I just got a message about it. 136. Oh, well, never mind. One of something like that. Years yeah, that's it. I, just, I I'm seeing that now. Yeah, I, I've been keeping up with it on, uh, there's a Facebook page that these people in Tylertown have a grant that they run. And so they keep up with, so yesterday we had uh, 1,073 and today we have 1,177. So, How many cases does Tylertown have? Uh, I think we have seven, we're below y'all. Yeah. 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 I tell you what, like I drive by Walmart, Walmart parking lot is just packed. And I'm like, go yeah. no home. Um, yeah. So. I I went um yesterday before they like did the shelter in place thing just so we could get a final supply run in. And That's what it's we did. so chaotic. Everybody is so mean now. They are. They I are. Like, I a lot of people, <laughs> I feel like, have been nicer. I don't know why, but, like, mm -hmm. some people have been, like, no. I, I told I somebody people. the other day that we have seen the very best of humanity and we have seen the very worst of humanity all mixed in one. Some yeah. people have just got, and I tell you what, y'all have been extremely fortunate. And I said, at some point, I want to sit down and come up with some way we can thank people. But I tell you, a lot of these services like Zoom and stuff like that, they are losing a bunch of money because they're giving us this for free. And, uh, you know, so all the different things that normally is how they make their money, they're just handing it to us so that we can keep on teaching. So I think that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm fixing to go pack up my stuff and go wipe down my room. And then I'm going to head back to Tyler town. And okay. if there's anything y'all need, just shoot me a message and um, I'll be glad to help you out. Just you need to make sure you try to get most of your work done today. Okay. I have one more thing. Yeah. I don't think I paid my chemistry fee, but I can't remember. Um, 
Let me look and see. I think I've got that spreadsheet at home and I can look and see when I get to the house. Because if okay. I didn't, do I have to drive to the school and pay for it tomorrow? No, the only people that really probably need to be worrying about that are seniors. Oh, we'll, okay. we'll catch you underclassmen either when we come back or um, I'm sure Mr. Hallmark will have something. The only ones that really need to stress about it are seniors right now. Seniors. Okay. All right. Well, it was great to see all of y'all, and I hope I see you very soon, okay? Yes, Stay inside. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.